Big Gamer Al here. How are you guys doing today? I'm super. Thanks for asking. Hey guys, so today I was hoping to kind of give you guys a bit of a game buyer's guide for the month of June. And I know what you're thinking, June, right? Uh, not a lot of games come out in June. What could you uh, possibly help me uh, uh, kind of choose uh, for my next game purchase in the month of June? Well, actually guys, a lot of games came out in June and, um, and I was surprised myself when I actually got around to writing these down. Um, so let's crack on and uh, and have a look and uh, and see exactly what is out at the moment. So uh, first game we're gonna uh, touch on is is kind of like the, probably the bigger release of this month, which is uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Came out quite early in the month and is the follow up to um, EA's Mirror's Edge, which if you've played it, it, scored fairly highly when it came out and it's a decent first person platformer and um, kind of come parkour game. And the the sequel's very very similar, guys. Plays very similar, um, similar quality. It's got an open world this time, but to be honest, it it adds a little bit more variety to the paths you can choose and stuff. But the side, uh, the kind of side quests and stuff don't add too much to the game. So it is very fairly similar to the original. But um, for me, as far as buying uh, a buyer's guide goes, I mean it's PS4, it's Xbox One, it's PC, it's all the big uh, platforms. I personally would say wait for a deal. I think this is a $60 game that uh, makes a lot of sense at $40. So guys, maybe wait for a deal for that one, but it is, uh, it's a decent game nonetheless. So um, The second game I'd like to talk to you guys about is a little bit of a hidden gem. Now if you're a RPG fan, especially a Western RPG fan, and you like the f likes of uh, Dragon Age or Mass Effect or something like that, then this game might appeal to you guys. So it's made by uh, a team called Spiders and it's called Technomancer and it's um, it's actually been developed for quite a while and it doesn't have a large budget or a big publisher backing or anything like that but it is fairly, it holds up fairly solidly the um, voice acting is not terrible, it's kind of run of the mill um, the graphics um, aren't hard to look at like some um, of these lower budget RPGs are um, and even though you know it doesn't have all the animations and mocap you would expect from like an Uncharted game or something like that, um, it's fairly well made, guys. And um, it offers a variety of combat systems. Uh, you can kind of choose between four different stances, uh, which are basically almost like uh, uh, job roles, almost. And um, and they they've they've got a little bit of pedigree in this. They've you know uh, made the kind of they took over the Gothic franchise kind of halfway through and stuff and made some of those games. So. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's it's one for me. I think the um, reviewers are coming in and calling it kind of like a, a six point five, six point eight kind of uh, rated game. And from from the first few hours of the game, I'm I'm feeling the same. It's uh it's one for genre fans. But if you're a genre fan, it is cheap. It's a budget game, so you could probably pick this up anywhere between thirty and forty bucks at the moment. And no doubt it'll be about twenty bucks in a week or two's time. So definitely, if you're a genre fan. Um, it's actually a bit of a hidden gem. Okay, guys. So the next game I want to talk to you guys about is another role-playing game. So um, this time it's a Japanese role-playing game and a good one at that. It's Tokyo Mirage uh, Sessions FE for the uh, Nintendo Wii U. Now, I haven't played the first couple of hours of this game as well so far. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised by the production values. I'm very surprised by how uh, easy the game is to play and follow the combat system is very kind of dragon quest ish it is turn based the uh, options available to you are quite simple but as you level you do unlock a lot of special abilities that you can equip to your characters and um, if you are into kind of j-pop uh, k-pop type um, kind of culture anyway i think this game will appeal to you on on aesthetic level alone and if you don't mind a bit of light uh, turn based combat as well then I think this has really got the total package it's scoring quite highly guys at the moment I think it's safe to say this game is probably an 8 out of 10 and at the price they're asking which is you know somewhere in the 50 to 60 dollar region I think that's fair and um, and this is actually one I do recommend for any JRPG fan if you're not into JRPGs I tentatively would wait for it to drop to about half price just it, it's fifty dollars and probably not the kind of entry point for someone that's not really into the genre 
So guys, the third game um, of June that I'd like to speak about is Mighty Number no. 9. Now, I was a little bit let down by this, I'll be honest. One of the first games I ever got for my NES um, was the first Mega Man game, and it's a game I played uh, during the school holidays for so many hours. And um, it, it was a nails hard game. I could only ever beat four, the four to six bosses, but um, it is... Uh, you know, it is a franchise I have enjoyed in the past, and to hear that they were making a modern uh, Mega Man um, kind of inspired game really did get me kind of excited. And I know it's been it's been in development hell for a little while and, and all that, but yeah, it just it just feels a little bland. The gameplay is quite tight. The system of kind of absorbing enemies and the uh, the boss fights and stuff. The gameplay is quite tight, and it does run at a decent clip, but the 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 real issue is is the story's kind of nowhere the environments and the characters don't do anything for me uh, and it just the whole thing feels a little uh, like a little dull and a little a little bit bland really to be honest guys so what I would say is uh, wait for the bargain bin for this one it's not expensive as it is you can pick it up for you know about thirty bucks wait for it to go to ten bucks that's what I'm gonna say um, number four uh, is Guilty Gear uh, Revelator which is a new or XRD Revelator, which is a new Guilty Gear game in the franchise. Now, they tend to churn these out kind of one every 18 months or something and make small revisions here and there. One thing I noticed with this latest one is, um, apart from the fact it's on PS4, which is a bit of a new direction for the franchise, is um, it's very focused on its um, its story mode. There's like a huge uh, amount of um, anime content in there. Um, and the story mode is basically hours and hours of um, of kind of anim- anime footage and uh, really delving into all the characters' stories and the world and the lore, which fans of the series, which has been running a long time, guys, um, will probably really, really enjoy. This is more, more than a decade old, this franchise at this point. So, um, yeah, so if, you, if, if, you, if that's what you're after, crack on. The actual gameplay um, is very similar to recent entries. It's very tight. It looks gorgeous. Um, they've been flirting with um, kind of rendering some of it in 3D, but it's all still in 2D, and, and, and that looks super uh, eye-catching as well, guys. So what I would say is if you are a 2D beat up fan, this is kind of a no-brainer, guys. Just go pick it up. It's uh, not even... It's just shy of full price. It's about 50 bucks. so uh, I would, I would uh, recommend going to pick that up. Okay, guys, so the next games I want to talk about are actually ones that I've picked up, but I haven't had a chance to get much hands-on time with them yet. So I'll just go through a few of these and kind of let you know what, they're, what they are and and um, also how how well they're being received. So uh, one game I picked up was Grand Kingdom on the PlayStation 4. Now, this is the same guys that made uh, Muramasa and Odin Sphere and stuff like that. It's some of the devs from that team have kind of gone on to do their own thing and they come up with a um, kind of a turn-based RPG uh, beautifully hand-drawn called uh, Grand Kingdom. It's currently uh, trending at around 80 on Metacritic so um, if that's your your cup of tea then I think it's kind of a no-brainer. The next game I want to talk about is Odin Sphere. Uh, I can't really pronounce this but Liftraiser. Now that is actually a remaster re-release of the original Odin Sphere. for the PlayStation 4 this time and it looks just as beautiful as ever but sharper than before they've made some refinements and um, stuff in there as well it comes very well presented um, for a decent uh, price of just under $50 it's currently trending at 88 on Metacritic so, I mean it's Odin Sphere so obviously that was a very highly regarded game anyway so uh, feel free to pick that up guys uh, Terraria just got a physical retail release on the Wii U, so I picked that up. That was super cheap, guys. I'm talking about twenty-five dollars uh, cheap. So um, feel free to pick that up. It is reviewing, depending on which um, which version you you pick up, anywhere from seventy to eighty on Metacritic. And um, yeah, and I just think it's it's uh, super interesting for them to release um, that on the Wii U this late uh, in its life cycle. So sticking with Wii U. Um, they also released uh, Minecraft physical edition on the Wii U, um, which looks super interesting. They've put a load of Mario content in there. They've got four four player multiplayer split screen. 
they've got off TV play with the gamepad, which I think is probably the biggest draw for owning this Wii U version. Um, and obviously, um, the market is there on the Wii U for that. So again, that that one's coming in at about thirty bucks, guys. So uh, not too expensive, and um, it's Minecraft, so you're going to get a fair amount of time out of that. Right, next game I want to talk about is another two D fighter, which is uh, JoJo's uh, Bizarre Adventure. Now, I didn't play too much of the last JoJo's game, so I'm not going to go too much into uh, detail about it, but um, it's they're, they're looking for about 50 bucks for this one, guys, and if you're a 2D fighting fan, these games do review quite well. There is no Metacritic rating on this one yet, because I don't think a lot of the reviews have actually got their hands on it, um, but you can expect the same kind of um, incremental updates that the Guilty Gear got, guys uh, gave their game. Um, the next game is Prison Architect which is kind of a cute kind of chibi strategy style game based around um, a, being a prison architect and um, that's for PS4 and Xbox One and that's currently trending at 79 on Metacritic. Another game I picked up was the director's cut of uh, Deadlight which is a game I beat when it was on XBLA a couple of years ago. Now they've re-released it with some um, additional content packed in. Um, they've given it a bit of a um, kind of a, a polish up for the next gen consoles and that's also Xbox One and PS4 guys and the Metacritic on that is 72 so I, I I would say um at the price they're asking which is kind of like twenty dollars it's um it's more than it will cost you to download it but it's nice to have the physical copy and the extra content on disc like that so it's kind of preserved should you want to go back to it in the future. The next uh, game is Sherlock Holmes the Devil's Daughter so out of all these games I haven't opened yet, I'm really, really excited to actually crack on with this because I've, I've been playing the Sherlock Holmes games for a while. I remember the Jack the Ripper one on the Xbox 360 was actually quite a decent game. And I've heard the changes they've been making to the series are really good. And it, it is t uh, trending on Metacritic at 71 at the moment uh, from several. You know, It's got quite a, a high number of reviews as well, so that's quite a steady uh, score for that now. And um, if you are into adventure style games like click point and click adventure style games but you actually prefer them with a, a more modern first person camera um, and kind of a little less adventure gamey and a little bit more action gamey they're kind of ever so slightly bridging the gap there with that stuff guys so uh, do uh, check that one out if that's if that's your bag and then uh, another game is Atelier Sophie Alchemist of the Mysterious Book now this is must be about the 10th game in this series by now. Uh, I've been following the, the um, Manakamiya um, Alchemist games since like, the PS2. And they are they're very different from a lot of uh, other stuff. They Don't get me wrong, the art style is extremely cute. Um, anime girls um, dressed up in very pretty outfits and all the rest of it. But um, it's kind of got its own cult following this series. And um, as I said, this is another one in the in the... Uh, series they all score between 70 and 80 like unanimously there are no real bad games in the series guys and there are no kind of game of the year contenders in the series you always get a decent RPG from these games and it's currently trending at 74 on Metacritic so guys um, that's what I've got for you guys today now obviously July is coming up and I'd love to do another one of these videos for you guys so if you enjoyed uh, this buyer's guide um, feel free to put a like or a comment on it or share it with your friends uh, if I get a decent uh, reception back from you guys, I'll be happy to do one for July and August and, and the upcoming months. So I hope you found that good, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.